I'm Ashton Addison from The Crypto Coin Show, and today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Amadeo Brands, co-founder and CEO of YieldNest. Amadeo, welcome to the show, and thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Aston, to be on this amazing show, the, the Coin Show, I, the Crypto Coin Show. Like, it's amazing to be here, and yeah, I've been following Aston like, for a long time, so it's an honor to be on the show, and yeah, thank you so much for, for inviting me. You're very welcome. It's an honor to have you, especially to discuss today about uh, liquid restaking, uh, eigenlayer, yield nest, and I feel like this is the evolution of uh, blockchains and specifically Ethereum uh, that not a lot of people fully understand the potential and the value that it has yet, and I'm excited to unlock that in the discussion today. Uh, so I would love to start off our conversation by first of all hearing a little bit about uh, your history. I know you're also an OG as well. Uh, if you could talk a little bit about your background in, in business and blockchain, how that led to founding Yield Nest, then we can dive into all the details. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. And yeah, I'm, I'm Amadeo Brands. I'm the co-founder and CEO of, of Yield Nest. Um, I basically started in crypto in 2012 and I was kind of still studying computer science and economics. I then kind of forgot about it and just started my boring like IT job as an IT consultant for uh, ING and other like insurance companies, big corporate stuff. Uh, yeah, and then in 2015, 16, I got re-interested in crypto again and dove in full time and started working for Cyber Capital, a crypt the first crypto hedge fund in the uh, Netherlands, where I kind of built out a whole like portfolio and system from zero to like $70 million at the time. That was like a huge crypto fund in around 2017. There was nothing in crypto at the time, so we had to rebuild everything from scratch. Then after that, I got more involved in a couple of protocols. I, I did some work with MakerDAO. I did some work with other DeFi protocols. I, I'm, I'm a DeFi purist. I like to build and harden DeFi infrastructure because I mm -hmm. think it's very important for the world and for uh, the progression of our you know, self-sovereign money layer. So that, I'm very excited about that. And then sort of DeFi capital that went very well. Uh, Recently did a video on that on the Ivan on Tech channel, so explaining my my uh, price targets I did in 2000, uh, 20, uh, in 2019 and in 2000 like until 2022. That was pretty good, and I, I I actually released new price targets there as well. And then uh, yeah, I worked with Curve Finance, worked with other DAOs, worked with other protocols as a consultant, and uh, now I'm full time focusing on Yield as my my own protocol. <laughs> in the liquid restaking space, which I mm -hmm. indeed think is very much uh, misunderstood and mm -hmm. uh, not undervalued because a lot of people are jumping into it. You know, mm -hmm. $15 billion is a lot. <laughs> so people do feel there is something there, but I, I don't think they quite get it, what, what it actually is. Yeah, Yeah. no, uh, that's a great background and I'm so glad you jumped back in because it's making a huge difference in the evolution of a blockchain. And I want to focus in on that last part about the misunderstanding of restaking, why it adds value, why it's actually important for blockchains and, and how people can understand it better. Can you break that down on what's the, the main misunderstanding or why it hasn't, there's a lot of capital, of course, that has jumped into restaking, but why do you think more people aren't understanding it as easily as they should? Yeah, it, it is a very complex concept. It took me also quite some time to understand it. Uh, but the more that I dive into it, the more that I understand how important and pivotal restaking the and exporting crypto economic security to other layers from layer one is for the evolution and, and continuation of the sovereign wealth layer that we're trying to create. I think mm -hmm. it's very important that we harden our DeFi infrastructure, right? Like Ashton, you've also been around for a long time. We both have seen many protocols come and go, and mm -hmm. ETH and you know Bitcoin are kind of here to stay. Uh, but the big question is like, how do we actually build decentralized infrastructure? How can we mm -hmm. do that in the best way, and how can we scale it? It's a big issue, and we have a core layer of settlement which we call ETH, right, or Bitcoin or whatever, and then you can you can secure multiple things with that. So I'm actually going a little bit of a step back to all the way back to merge mining, which I think Ashton and many listeners understand. With merge mining, you just run your machine and you, you run your mining machine and you mine multiple chains, right? Uh, that didn't really work out for 
multiple technical reasons. Um, and now with restaking, we can actually do that same thing, but then better. So where um, we before could only like, if we build a DeFi protocol, there's a lot of off-chain components that we need to keep track of. Like there's web services, there is oracles, there is a lot of things that come into play to actually make a DeFi protocol decentralized or distributed and, and work uh, in, a, in, a, in a fully decentralized manner. And with restaking, we can actually harden all those infrastructure pieces uh, and actually make DeFi uh, much harder and more decentralized and harden that overall infrastructure and architecture, I would say. And I also think that, yeah, so that is the base <clears throat> case. I think that is actually before I dive into yield or anything like that, I think it's very important to understand that uh, the restaking is an important part of the uh, potentially of the Ethereum protocol and it should potentially even be enshrined in the protocol. Mm -hmm. That is a discussion I want to leave into uh, <laughs> later. And I think it's really good to have those experiments done uh, separate first mm -hmm. and experiment with it in different ways. And then from there move into, um, yeah, move into the more, more complex, uh, uh, yeah, topics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's a great start, Amadeo. And what you're saying is this restaking, it's, it's actually crucial for the, the security of the network. You know, when Ethereum moved to proof of stake, no longer were you mining it, you had to stake to help secure the network. So when you add in the restaking layer and these other layer twos, does that actually add further security on top of just like staking your ETH to help secure the network? Does that make it even more secure? It actually makes it more risky, but it ex exports the security. So mm. <laughs> it's more that, that if we really want to have a very secure, safe base layer, yeah, we should just build a just one monolithic chain, right? Like we, mm -hmm. or maybe a par parallel VM, right? And these experiments are now going in parallel. And restaking is a way that we can actually, in my opinion, achieve, <coughs> uh, it's, it's a more elegant design to achieve uh, applications like an AMM or like a layer two, but actually build that food <coughs> in a fully decentralized manner, right? We have now EigenDA coming live, but we have also a DA layer in the Ethereum protocol itself. Mm -hmm. Right, but we uh, uh, it, it, it is not full data availability that that Ethereum now releases. Right, full data availability comes later, and I think in order to make this uh, to make DeFi and all the <clears throat> applications that we're used to in a fully decentralized way, not like I mean I'm not against Solana or other monolithic chains, right? But I think that Ethereum has <clears throat> the higher settlement assurances over mm -hmm. these other monolithic chains in my opinion and in order to preserve preserve these values we will need to find a way to to export that crypto economic security in ways so that we can reuse it mm -hmm. else it's just too expensive to to potentially too expensive to maintain mm -hmm. uh, and uh i think we need it uh, it's still uh actually yesterday i was in the crypto town hall with with uh, with a couple of the, the, the ex sec commissioner was there and he was talking about all these regulations and rules that are coming and i think we need a sovereign layer and i think potentially this year or hopefully not but at some point we will see other more centralized chains being being just attacked and taken mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. right as you know like as a core of the industry how we got started from the grassroots it was always very important to prepare for that moment and i think that moment is coming soon mm -hmm. and i think ethereum is striking that right middle ground and with restaking we can actually also still build cool DeFi applications on top of it, I would say, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now with, uh, the, you know, you mentioned there a little bit of extra risk, uh, but with, you know, risk sort of equals reward. So there's obviously there's more rewards or there's more utility at least when you have restaking. Could you explain for somebody who, you know, maybe they have some ether, maybe they looked into just regular old staking back in the day, but they don't understand restaking. What are the rewards or the extra utility in, hey, I'm going to, yield nest and I'm going to stake the ETH, but there's these other benefits because it's part of the liquid restaking program. Exactly. Yeah. Let's dive into it. Now we did, I did a bit of the start of the technical, right? And now we go to the fun part, like where's this, this, the yield for you, right? So I, again, would, 
take an example, very simple to understand. Uh, banks, normally if you, you stake your fiat in a bank, right? <laughs> you, you, your bank is using that for you, right? And now if you, uh, you, 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 could, you, could, you could actually have your, your Ethereum stake, you can keep that on, on your ledger, very secure, do nothing with it, right? Because Ethereum might go up the price. Or you can, you can stake it to secure the Ethereum network, or you can then stake that to secure a whole plethora of new active, we call them active validated services that, that can be built by exporting that crypto economic security that I just was trying to explain. We can build bridge infrastructure, we can build oracles, we can build keeper bots, but also AI interfaces, AI agents. Uh, we can build a lot of really cool things that might need crypto economic security in order to uh, secure its uh, Secure its 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 data that's broadcasting. Secure its performance. Build SLA. Build instant dispute resolution. So a lot of things are coming, uh, and you can then restake your Eve to any of these operators that operate these active validated services. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of risk control. But if you restake to a good operator, you can you can earn a quite a juicy extra yield on top of your staking rewards, your base staking rewards. And with Yieldness, we are basically managing all these complexities for you. So instead, similar to Lido or Rocket Pool or other things where you can just buy this token and get a base yield, you will be able to just stake your ETH and get a base uh, a base yield plus if yes yield yield plus uh, yield nest uh, seeds that we can talk about. So we're going to give away extra rewards on top of your ETH staking, AVS rewards, and yieldness seeds, which are basically our like points program that we're going to give away. So somebody that restakes at Yieldnest is going to get a lot of you know rewards uh, by securing the Ethereum network and uh, uh, you know, restaking ETH and earning extra rewards on top of that. Yes. Okay, that's great to know. And, and with Yieldnest, I know you and your team have been working on it for a while. What's the current status of the testnet main net and, and how far exactly you are in the development? Yeah, it's five minutes before 12. So we're, we're almost going live. Uh, <laughs> our testnets can be found at oleski.yieldnest.finance or just go to yieldnest.finance or type yieldnest into Twitter and you will find all the links that you need mm -hmm. to look for. And uh, you can test out our testnet right now. It's live. And on the uh, around the 8th of May, so the exact date is it's tentative, but mm -hmm. let's say between <clears throat> seven or maybe 10 or maybe a bit later. So we, because we're doing a lot of tests and I take security very seriously. So we're initiating the Yieldness protocol. It's a Yieldness DAO, it's a Yieldness protocol that's going to be going live. And then if deposits will open and then the protocol will be initiated and you will be able to earn Yieldness seeds and you will be able to earn base Ethereum rewards and uh, potential AVS uh, rewards or airdrops that might come from the restaking activities. Mm -hmm. All of that will be translated back to our end users uh, at, at start. Um, and over time, we are going to activate a fee of 10% over all the rewards that will then also flow back to the Yieldnest uh, DAO token holders mm -hmm. that basically will get rewards distributed in ETH, right? So yeah. I think it's very important for any serious protocol that wants to uh, basically uh, uh, position itself to give real yield. We, we see too many protocols that are just hypothecating uh, rewards on top of top of top. We will give mm -hmm. real yield in ETH over time on the, for the tokens, the mm -hmm. yieldness, the our governance tokens that will be uh, that you can stake into the protocol. Mm -hmm. And if you stake your ETH, you will be able to participate and get a share of those tokens that will eventually earn those rewards. So, you know, I would say we have seen a lot of different liquid restaking protocols go live. Mm -hmm. Yieldnets is a little bit later to the game. That's because we have been building out uh, uh, like uh, categories, isolated categories, uh, much more research into AVSs, we kind of saw this this eigen point hype for what it was, mm -hmm. and we're just focusing on on the next step. And now the eigen token is actually live. You can very clearly see the direction that 
the restaking restaking as a primitive is taking mm -hmm. and also eigenlayer as a protocol in that primitive is taking mm. and we are just moving into that and clearly differentiating ourselves by uh, yeah having isolated categories having different baskets that we're, we're going to release so mm -hmm. you will see if you go to the test and it's not nothing like a standard restaking protocol of course we still have a lot of work to do our protocols just initiating but our vision is very grand <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. No, that's great. And I think that the launch of Eigenlayer, uh, <clears throat> as it is out for longer, um, and you know, Yield Nest might be coming in at the perfect time because there's still so many people who haven't got into restaking. They're sort of waiting for it to become a little bit more of the normal. And um, I think that now this, this is out. It's like the 95% of people in crypto can start familiarizing themselves with it. So, um, and, and the May 8th mainnet, that's, that's coming up pretty quick here. Uh, I'm curious, are there limitations for somebody who just wants to test the waters? Say, um, is there a minimum amount of ETH or do you have to lock in for years or you can pull it out right away, you can put in $10? Uh, what are the limitations or what are the advantages of like putting in more? Yeah, so I would say in the beginning, we're, as I said, it's very important to understand we're initiating the protocol and we're also super <coughs> transparent about that. We can talk about a little bit maybe later about the risks and other things. Mm -hmm. We have our own risk uh, uh, committee and, and independent risk researchers all on board. So we take it seriously. So initiating in liquid staking derivative protocol takes time. You cannot just like open the protocol and then activate withdrawals at the same day, right? But, you know, we ensure our community that we will activate withdrawals uh, before we're going to do any TGE. Uh, and that's coming, you know, very soon afterwards. So it's going to be, it's, it's a very smooth ride because we planned out everything very, uh, very uh, clearly. We took our time and we have a security audit by Chain Security, one of the better auditors in the space. And uh, yeah, we're, we're ready to go. Uh, the if will be, you will get... When you send in your ETH, you got yield nest ETH in return. This will be uh, passed in the beginning because we're initiating the protocol. But in return, we're rewarding all of our depositors with a 5x seed boost. And this is a boost that we're not going to give away uh, any more in any point in time in the in the protocol's life cycle, right? So this is a boost. When you restake your, your ETH, you get a 5x the base rate of uh, rewards on top of your restake ETH for one week or two weeks, depend, depending on how quick and how much deposits we get. And if we reach our target of between 50 and 100 million, we will uh, at that point, at some point, like activate the, the, the tokens and activate you know, the, the, the transfers and activate the pools and activate the withdrawals that's coming after. And that's, it's, it is a very normal way to activate a protocol. And it's a bit annoying that like some protocols like Renzo and other ones that got so much trust like don't activate the withdrawals before they activate their token uh, release, right? It's mm -hmm. very clearly that Renzo kind of wanted to front run the Eigen uh, token launch. They kind of probably got some insights there. Mm -hmm. Good for them, like no aid for them, but I hope that people do not lose trust in real serious builders and initiating a protocol just takes time. It, mm -hmm. is, it is what it is, yeah. Definitely. Well, that's good to know about the, the, the 5X seed. Um, I'm gonna pay attention for that main net launch uh, a rounder after May 8th to definitely take a look at that um, because usually the early bird gets the worm um, or they get extra seeds in this case. So um, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to check that out. <clears throat> um, is there a place that people can go to follow along with the updates or to learn more exactly about how the Yield Nest protocol works with liquid restaking? Yes, uh, I would say definitely just go to our Twitter. That's probably the best way to go. And then go to our uh, website or mm -hmm. testnet. And then go to our docs if you really want to dive deep and be a DeFi nerd. You can go really deep. And we have a lot of information uh, written down there about all the different uh, aspects. Or you can follow my own Twitter, uh, at Amadeo Brands is my name, uh, where I also release a lot of uh, snippets about uh, eigenlayer research that I'm that I'm doing uh, uh, myself. Um, and I would say uh, to, to the community to get a really good comparison chart of like mm -hmm. the different mm -hmm. competitors, the different LRTs, what we're doing, how we're different. Go to our Twitter. I will actually link this to Ashton. 
do mm -hmm. our competitor analysis <coughs> where you can actually see very much side by side what we have been building mm -hmm. and what our vision is, what we will build in the future how, and how that compares to already existing LRT protocols that in my opinion do not have a clear yeah, well, what are they going to do now? The Icon token is out. <laughs> that we, we have a clear vision and uh, we are focused on the future and mm -hmm. we, uh, we want to move forward. And uh, yeah, we want to move the DeFi and Ethereum space to the next level. Yeah, that's great to hear, Amadeo. And I'll definitely leave uh, a link to that comparison. Um, I'm uh, eager to, to check it out myself as well. I'll put that in the show notes <clears throat> as well as the Twitter and the test net. Uh, and, and your Twitter as well. So I can follow along for the launch to the mainnet and then uh, getting involved and following up to the TGE and beyond as we looking hopefully very long term into the, the growth of blockchain into the mainstream. Uh, so I really appreciate your insights into all of this and, and I think an underappreciated section of, of blockchain right now. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ash. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Be sure to follow Yield Nest. And uh, I hope to see everybody soon on Mainnet.